It is. Welcome to tonight's Random Dialogues live. It's seven o'clock. We're usually live for the next 45 minutes hour. I think this is show number 18. So I've been running since 2016 offline and then the last year online. So here we are. It's very random. Um, possibly some of us have got a talk. We usually have up to sort of five minutes to speak about something random, but actually it's quite nice to run it very much like this, just um, off the cuff. And, and I suddenly... think it's amazing that Jason has come this week, is able to come, but he's actually decided to come as uh, with his dog suit on. <laughs> and Julie, <laughs> a disguised as Julie. <laughs> Hi, Jason. So he's really, he's really Julie's uh, hand puppet. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Or this one. <laughs> That's it. Oh. Yeah. So should we just say where we all are in the world and, uh, and our names and what we might possibly be talking about? Should we go around? Who'd like to, who'd like to start? Okay, well, uh, I've got the longest, almost, apart from Ella. She's, no, we're touching, uh, almost. Uh, so I'm Ian Moncrief McMillan. I'm uh, currently one change of horses north of London, a place called St Albans, um, named after uh, uh, a um, patron. It was the first uh, English martyr. Right. Ella's gone. Yep. <laughs> Do you have anything you're going to talk about this evening? Uh, I don't know. It could be about uh, uh, parakeets, uh, skylarks and parakeets, um, or it could be Viking velociraptors. I don't know. Fantastic. Phil. Hi, I'm Phil. I'm in Ashstead near Leatherhead, in between Leatherhead and Epsom. Um, and, um, well, that's, that's it, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be talking. Oh, I'm speaking to you from my shed. It might not look like a shed, but it is actually a shed that I converted into an office. And I've got my, uh, uh, behind me here is a cartoon cell of the Pink Panther uh, with, a, with the pencil sketch that was done before the main sketch. The main thing that was, uh, is the acetate thing that they yeah, used. Phil in. locked in his, shale, his cell with a cell. <laughs> yes. So with a cell. Exactly. Uh, and and uh, about this time last year, he was locked in a cellar. I was. <laughs> in Australia. I, I was locked in a cellar. This time last year, I was locked in a cellar in a house in Sydney, in Australia, in COVID uh, exile. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> now. Anyway, now, I'm going to talk tonight mm. about a... No, I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to let, let you wait. It's a, it's a kind of a bit woo-woo, but then it's not. Okay. Now Don't we're also very, very randomly <laughs> joined by Julie, who was going to watch tonight and said, "I haven't got the viewing link, Jane." I was like, I was nervous to send out the viewing link because suddenly no, there were no speakers about ten minutes ago, and I said, "Actually, do you fancy coming to join us?" <laughs> so here she is. <laughs> I've invited Julie to join us. Julie, welcome. Thank you. And I have the gift of the gab, as just like Jane does. You can't shut us up once we start. Uh, I'm in Slovakia right now, but I'm Canadian. Just that's my little background. So I am actually a year, uh, I was going to say a year later than you. That's the wrong word. I am an hour different than you. So, uh, uh, And I'm a year later than me. <laughs> and Julia, yeah. Julia and I used to work, well, we met in Tanzania when we were both teaching out there. Yeah. Have you got your Tanzanian beads up? Oh, <laughs> homage for our friendship here, where we met. We were too. We were next to each other, weren't we, in the classrooms and opposite each other in our houses? It's brilliant. Yeah. And welcome, Ella. Hi. Sorry, Hi. I just had a problem with my internet just now. I had to sit and play with it to make it work. Welcome. Where are you tuning in from? Uh, this is my dining room, <laughs> dining area. <laughs> Snap. And and what are you going to? Have you got a top? You've got a. You've actually come a bit more organised than the rest of us, I think. <laughs> yeah. you, you, can, you can tell this is the first time. <laughs> well, what, it, it, well, as an accountant, if you're not sure, just prepare for everything. That's what we have to do. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I do. Yes. And do you have <laughs> a title? Kind a title of. Yes, for your kind of talk. 
Yeah, there was there was a there was a post on social media this morning by another accountant, and it was like, oh well, I never really chose to be an accountant, and I'm like, now I know what I'm going to talk about tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Fantastic. So that's the title of the talk. Now I know what I'm going to talk about tonight. Maybe that's the title for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> right, who would like to uh, so, take so, so, the hot seat? Uh, sorry, sorry. No, no. First off, who are you? Where are you calling from? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, hi, hi, I'm Jane. <laughs> I am calling from Guildford, Surrey in the UK. And Random Dialogues was set up in 2016 as a way to, you know, to build community and to give people a voice to connect them with their passions and what they love to do and share in an all kind of real way rather than coming too prepared and too polished and too much of a kind of speaker. It was more about actually let's just talk about what we love to do from our heart and and throw away the notes if we need to so that's kind of what this was about and then from that i've got the facebook group and um yeah and it's i think it's for people who get who like the idea of random certainly unplanned <laughs> so here we are I think, <laughs> I think i think it's most of us here so okay. Ian, do you want do, who would like to talk first anyone particularly like to take the center stage if they're happy to go solo if they kind of want to go for it I pick on Phil. <laughs> okay, all right. So, um, so my, just a little solo. My my talk is about a random event. Well, you decide on whether it's random or not, but it starts with a dream I had last night. So I had this dream about a holiday that I'd had, and oh, well, I was in my mid thirties. Um, and um, so it's a long time ago, and um, uh, this was a holiday I had with a with a, a mate of mine, my best friend at the time, a guy called Gil Lewis, and uh, we decided to go on a on a, a week's golfing holiday to Spain. Uh, we thought we, we didn't have any clubs; we weren't really golfers, but we thought it would good it was a good excuse. So. Um, we we stayed uh, at a friend's apartment in a place called Estepona. I don't know if you've heard of Estepona, but it's kind of between Marbella and um, Gibraltar, somewhere along there. And um, we, um, in the spirit of golf, you, you can usually set the rules according to the local um, situation. And that's what we did. We, we decided we were sitting in the bar and um, deciding you know, what, where we were going to play, where we were going to get the clubs, and all that kind of stuff. And we got really bogged down with it. And then we said, well, let's, let's create our own local rules. And we thought that we would be so evenly matched that we might as well just, you know, we'd end up having to toss a coin to see who'd won. So we thought, well, why not just toss a coin while we're sitting at the bar? And that's what we did all week um, to decide on who... Was who, who, who'd run the golf. But during this time, and this is the weird thing, I dreamt about this holiday last night. And then at lunchtime today, um, on daytime television, there was a program, program about people going off to buy a house in the sun. And it was a couple buying a, a, a place in Estepona. So it's a bit weird. I dreamt about Estepona last night. There it was on the telly today. So anyway, the story I want to tell you is nothing to do with any of that. Um, Gil and I were on the beach and it was hot. And um, there was a, a very um, attractive young woman, probably a mid-twenties, mid to late-twenties, who um, walked onto the beach spread her towel out about probably about 25 yards from us. Um, so that's about 30 meters, 25 meters for those uh, uh, who are younger than me. Um, and um, uh, took her top off because that was the thing back then. Everybody were well, topless beaches. And uh, of course we couldn't help noticing this. And we were chatting away and, uh, um, 
a girl went off to get some drinks and I thought I thought up this random plan. So I went over to this girl and I said, um, uh, if you want to have a bit of fun, um, I'm going to have a bet with my mate over there that I can get you to come over and join us and put some tongue lotion on me. And uh, if you do that, uh, because I'm going to bet him a bottle of champagne, and you can have the champagne. Well, she thought it was sort of, you know, a good idea, sort of a bit of fun. Um, she was on her own. She was she been she was staying with a friend of hers who was an air hostess, and so she was on her own a lot of the time. And um, Gil came back from from the bar, and uh, I, I just I said to him. Uh, I just g'd him up a bit after after a few minutes. I said to, we were talking about this girl. I said I bet I can get her to come over and put some suntan lotion on me. He said no, nah, you got no chance. I said no chance. I said well, I'll bet you a bottle of champagne. Now nah, you'll never do it. I said well, bet. so he took the bet. And uh, then um, uh, I said okay, well I'm going to go over and have a chat. So I went over and she came over with me and put a towel down next to us. And uh, she she really played a part brilliantly. She said, oh, you look really, um, oh, yeah, she said that she was a nurse. That was it. And she was worried about uh, my fair skin and getting burnt and would I like some suntan lotion. So I said, oh, yeah, fine. And then so she, um, she did something that I hadn't anticipated. She squatted on me and rubbed my chest with suntan lotion. Well, my mate Gil, um, he had apoplexy. He couldn't believe it. It was just bonkers. And um, so um, he had to go and get this bottle of champagne. And it, so he brought it back. And I said, I think this bottle should uh, go to, um, I think she was called Elaine. I said, this bottle should go to Elaine. And I gave her the bottle of champagne. And um, he never found out, and I've never told him to this day, how that happened. So that's my little random secret. That's me done. Can't hear any of you. You're all muted. And we're all muted. <laughs> Julie wrote, no, I think the chat's for everybody. She wrote, is he going to tell us they got married in the end? <laughs> I would say that would be one plan that just went like ace there. <laughs> you managed just to, to get the trick. woman. <laughs> so is this in your dream or in reality? That was in reality. <laughs> and how old were you then? I was mid thirties. Oh, okay. Did yeah. Elaine ever keep in contact with you both? <laughs> no, of course not. It was just a bit of fun on the beach. It was good. It was good. It worked. Now, Phil has been uh, coming along to the Random Dialogues speaking nights for most months, and we've kind of catalogued, or well, I have as I've gone, everyone's talk. So it goes into like a document on Google, and I published it. So all these all these events kind of then get transcribed in Otter, so you can see all the previous ones he's also spoken about. So there's quite a big collection now of wonderful stories and his, you know, his adventures over the years. So thank you, Phil. Anyone got any questions? And also our, our viewer. We haven't got any viewers because our only viewer who was going to watch is now in the studio with us. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I am your one follower. No, you are our number one fan. We were, I was desperate. I was I'm the number one fan, but to be fair, I've never actually seen a random dialogue. <laughs> and, but the, the concept intrigued me, so I was thinking, let's check it out. This is no. it. Jane and is I, always up to mischief, so I thought, <laughs> why not support her? Somehow I ended up on the panel of... <laughs> of randomness. Of ra but randomly ended up on the panel. And it's so perfect. Why not? <laughs> it's perfect, isn't it? This is perfect random. This is actually what it's about. So, anyone so else like to... Uh, oh, go on. Well, I just want to check in. Um, a couple of things, thinking about the sort of beaches and suntan cream and things. Um, have I told the story about... Um, uh, me getting sunburnt on a very private part in France, um, <laughs> uh, uh, or the time when I actually the sort of um, yeah that was very uh, the going up sort of walking across and the sort of uh, 
finding this place it's on a nudist beat in southern france um uh, all the time when i got i think I, I think i've told the story about when i i've done the naked in the lift in new york i've done that one yeah you've done that uh, uh, and I think the, but the other one was uh, just with a pair of swimming trunks and a fork where I got um, uh, I got sort of um, held to the ground by the French Secret Service. Did I ever tell that one? Oh, yeah. that sounds cool. Okay. I'd like to hear that one. <laughs> do you want to be that? Do you want that to be your talk tonight then? Oh. I, I can because the other ones are very boring. Okay. Do you, want to play, do you want to go into solo layer or just chat here with us about it? Oh, I could just chat here about it. So, okay, um, God, tell us your story. Uh, yeah, because, well... well um, Thinking about beaches, um, I was in southern France and, um, you know, I was about, uh, I think it was about 17, 16, 17, eight, so that's sort of 18. Um, and uh, what was weird about it um, was, you know, my, uh, my cousin and I decided to go for a uh, walk along the beach and sort of miles, where, you know, we decided to go for a real hike and walk along and um, we suddenly realised everybody was staring at us. We thought, why is everybody staring at us? And we realised that everybody else was naked and we weren't. <laughs> So we just so we just literally um so we so yeah you know, tops off you know we just had sort of a pair of shorts whatever a little we had a few things we just carry but so we suddenly realized actually when we took our trunks off everybody stopped staring so it felt that was much more um you know we, we felt actually weirdly more comfortable um but then we actually uh, <laughs> so at the end, of, so we're walking on the beach, um, and then we actually got to a point where we actually sort of disappeared off the beach. It's a big cliff, and we had to go up this cliff, and we're actually at the top, of, right at the top of this uh, cliff. Um, we walked for a long way up to the top of there. There was a, there was a, and it was really hot, and we walked for miles along the beach, and there was a, a titchy little, just a, a, a cupboard, with. I think there was a block of ice in it, and a sort of, a sort of, and there was a little table and two uh, two chairs and a little sunshade. It's a bit of a shade from the tree. There's an old lady there, and uh, she said, um, "She said, well, do you have something to drink?" So, well, what do you want? So she said, uh, "Well, we'll have uh, two orangina." And so she went up to the uh, thing, opened the thing. So, Don't have any of those. Came okay, well, so eventually we went through everything. Do you have uh, Coca Cola? No. So what do you have? She had one can of Guinness that was slightly warm. <laughs> that was the only thing she had. Literally, she had nothing else. And I don't know who her clients were going to be. But anyway, we were the clients. We shared a, uh, half a can of Guinness each, and that was it. But um, that evening when I got back to uh, where we were staying, and uh, my, all my uncles and aunts and um, uh, my mum had all gathered together, all grouped together to build a, build a house in the south of France. Uh, but it was really crowded, so we actually, uh, so I stayed off in the, uh, um, uh, in in a, uh, um, just on a boat in the port, and my girlfriend at the time, uh, we sort of stayed there. And it was about, yeah, it was about eighteen, sort of, uh, sort of, eight, yeah, eight. I just left, just left school, and um, I'd realised that night that actually walking naked is not the smartest thing because if the sun hasn't shone there for a ever suddenly realized that uh, um yeah uh, my very private parts had got very red and that evening just actually sort of being in a boat uh suddenly with somebody, it's just somebody else nearby you suddenly oh. so every time we just every, just every time we sort of every time anybody moved anybody sort of touched anything or did anything it was sort of um you know it's agony when i was actually in uh, in um, in the dinner table with all my uncles and aunts my aunties were very funny because they kept on saying what's wrong <laughs> and my other cousin had exactly the same so uh you know mark and his two were just like yeah well actually so <laughs> we both done our uh, both on our willies and he just said um, our aunties were just wouldn't stop us um so that was my that was my silly story. I don't know why. That's brilliant. Oh, and the, so the Secret Service one. Okay, later on that um, that holiday, we were actually went off to um, we had a boat, and took into this uh, um, into a co cove. My uncle sort of dropped it, and he um, so my cousin and I, same cousin actually, decided to swim out to the shore, and uh, we swam out. And uh, as we were actually just getting on the beach, I my foot touched something that was very sharp, so I just scrubbed down this in the sand. And I found this silver salad server. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just go up to the house and uh, and go and uh, take it up there. So I walked up to the house just with this, you know, literally just a pair of swimming shorts, shorts and a, and a salad server. And I knocked on the uh, window because I could see somebody there in behind a cook or somebody. And as I'd knocked on the door, suddenly just um, as I knocked on the sort of French doors, out of nowhere, 
uh, yeah, the next thing I knew, I just on the ground and a gun to my head <laughs> and a knee on my back. And um, it was two French Secret Service uh, people that actually, because you can smell the gun oil, you know, you can smell the thing on that. I knew what it was. And they're just saying, right, you know, whatever. And uh, there was me just, um, you know, with my little salad fork and my pet small shorts, <laughs> little sesame trunks. And I hadn't realized I'd wandered into the uh, French um, president's summer palace. And there was me actually, uh, you know, there to actually just give this fork back. <laughs> they thought I was, you know, there to attack. Um, so I didn't, I didn't speak very much French, um, but anyway, I, I knew that there basically <laughs> was a deep shit. Um, but the chef, so the cook came out and she said, oh, fantastic. Cause they'd lost some of this stuff on a big party on the beach and it was quite special stuff. It was a beautifully, um, you know, solid silver thing, salad server. And, um, yeah, so she said, oh, hang on a second. So she gave me a bottle of fizz. And um, they actually it's good to be down to the beach and just said, uh, you know, thank you very much, but don't come back. <laughs> so I uh, somehow was able to swim over to the boat. Actually, that's how I got did my bottle of champagne. You, did they let you keep the salad server? No, that would be just uh, that would be too much. So so that's how I got that's how I got my bottle of champagne on a on a beach. So I didn't have to actually go and rub anybody else over with suntan cream. <laughs> So, uh, so uh, Julie, how did get you? How do you get your champagne? Uh, to be honest, I don't think I've ever earned a bottle of champagne anywhere. No, sorry, I don't have a champagne story. Can't tell you Shit. that. So I'm just going to go around and pick off every. Oh, see, maybe, see Ella the maybe Ella does. Maybe Ella. Maybe that's the theme for this evening. Anyway. <laughs> Damn, sorry. <laughs> well, if Ella has one. I'm sure I can make one up, but <laughs> you'll never be the wiser. <laughs> I think. The, the thing about the, the nudists on the beach always reminds me to, about my parents. We went to northern Spain, and I was about 15, and we, we went to this little, little beach, and of course it wasn't that overly populated, but of course it was all topless. So my mum is getting changed behind a full towel okay, she's making my dad stand and hold the towel up so she can put on a full swimming costume. And he's saying, nobody cares. Everybody here is topless. And she's going, I don't care. I don't care who else is here. Nobody is seeing my bits. And that's just it. <laughs> but, but you were right, Ian. I mean... I had a swimming swimsuit on. I mean, I was 15. I wasn't going to, you know, go topless. It, it just wasn't my thing at the time. And and my mum was insisting on wearing a full, full one-piece proper swimsuit. And I think we were the only two women being stared at on that beach. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was a weird experience. I suddenly thought, because it was a very, very long um it's a whole sort of nature sort of naturalist sort of paradise there and it's one of the islands off um uh there sort of pokerola they have uh, the whole island is uh, nudist apart from the military complex just on the edge where you, which is very odd um my uncle used to call it the uh, the island of the carrying handles <laughs> Um, but that's yeah. I nearly uh, yeah. He nearly uh, one of my uncles nearly drowned me there. Actually, was uh, the boat was big enough to water ski. Sorry, it was uh, just about the size that if it was any bigger, it you wouldn't be able to get enough power in it to water ski. Uh, I don't know how the crazy thing they bought for Tuppence Saint And so you have um, so there's a whole lot of people actually just sort of sunbathing just on the back. So there's a little area where you could sunbathe. And my uncle was just driving, and he was uh, very forgetful. And uh, so we used to take an intensive water ski behind it. And uh, I jumped up there, and he forgot that I was on there. <laughs> so as me just saying, I'm getting sick of this. <laughs> and everybody else just lay down and fell asleep. And there's my uncle. Goes, <laughs> and he going from the mainland out to this island. It's about, it's about 25, 30 minutes to actually sort of, I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> you know, you start off doing it, you get up, and you're sort of doing the sort of bits on this, you know, all the sort of clever bits and whizzing around. And you, oh, it's almost, you know, and then suddenly thought, oh, shit, nobody's paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, let it go. That's it. That's me gone. So I just literally just hunkered down. Just, 
Because you're going to get left out there. Yeah, and I, and I literally just, um, yeah, that was a long time. But I think the, the weirdest experience uh, was going just outside uh, one part of the bay. We went off towards Nero Saint Tropez, and uh, the current isn't particularly strong at some parts of the year. And again, you've got all these big, big sort of, sort of as they were, super yachts. They're not, you know, compared to today, they're little, sort of little titchy little things. And um, you're just skiing along in a nice, beautiful, you know, uh, flat sea and then suddenly one of your skis goes Duk. and you think oh what the hell was that and you're like that's awful it happened to me it happened to a few of us and um what you've got at the end of your ski it's a huge ball of poo <laughs> what happens is these um they don't they're much better now is that you've got these um rather than having a chemical toilet, they compress everything and then just let this little ball go out. And sometimes they float. <laughs> so, so you're skiing along. <laughs> just sticks on the end of your skis. Oh, oh brilliant. Oh. Brilliant. Right. I like... Um, I like uh, Julie's uh, summary of... Uh, of the Williams talk. <laughs> he was attacked by Secret Service on a nude beach for hiding such a big weapon. <laughs> I didn't know the stories weren't related. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. And I was thinking, I'll just, uh, I'll just take these headlines from Julie. If you could summarise everyone's, Julie, we can let you talk of our talk. <laughs> Ella. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Over to you. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I'm kind of flown now. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of thrown or flown. Oh no, I flew yesterday. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ella's, Ella's, a, Ella's got some amazing, amazing stories too. She's a really You've done yeah, a but the, the, one that comes to mind, the one that comes to mind now after Phil and Ian's uh, <laughs> uh, things, it was it's talking about Saint Tropez again. I, when I went to college, I went to art college. I did um, art and history and art, and um, we went down to Saint Tropez on a college trip. Uh, for a week, we went around all the art galleries, and uh, it was absolutely amazing. But one of the the, <laughs> the things that I quite enjoyed was um, on, on one particular day we, we were out sort of walking around Saint Tropez, you know, as teenagers do. And um, this guy drove up in a black sports car and um and sort of parked it and and me and my two friends we we were sort of just walking along the promenade and um talking about this car <laughs> and my friend said oh I, you know i really like that car and i went yeah i wouldn't mind having a ride in it and then this guy just was just appeared to the side of us and said if you want to have a ride in the car that that's fine and um so he took me for a ride in his lamborghini count ash around saint <laughs> <laughs> and it was really weird it was like being in a goldfish bowl i actually quite put me off sports cars for a while because it was so low down and you're looking up and everybody's looking down at you as you're driving around um but the the thing that made me smile was and and it and it's funny it's a theme that that goes through it's like we're talking about other stuff that i've done so i was the one out of my friends that said i want to have a ride in the car and and he went, yeah, you want to have a ride in the car? Come and have a ride in the car. And then and he was telling me about his, his business and what he did and stuff like that. And um, and then sort of, you know, it finished and sort of got out and had my picture taken. I've still got the photo of me leaning on his car. <laughs> and but my, my friend was like, oh, I wouldn't have minded a ride in the car. Oh, why did he give you a ride and not me? And it was literally because I said I wanted a ride in the car. But, uh, yeah, so that was very interesting. But the other thing <laughs> about the trip, on the last night, so you, you imagine like school trips and college trips where you'll have to be really good and, you know, you, you, no, no drinking rooms and all that sort of thing. 
And honestly, sir, we were very good and we didn't do anything like that. We were all good boys and girls. Honestly, we were. And then, of course, on the last night, it was let's all go and have a barbecue on the beach in the evening well of course it's the south of france and you weren't allowed to be on the beach after 10 o'clock and you weren't allowed to have a bonfire but of course all the lecturers were there with us so we kind of, we kind of did that um and it was uh, great until one of the lecturers got so drunk that he decided to start walking into the sea because he was going to swim home back to england and we had to kind of point out to him that not only was he not on the right coast of France, but if he carried on swimming in a straight line, he he would end up probably down in Algiers rather back than back in England. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, you, you guys just reminded me all about that. I haven't thought about that for years. Um, but no, it was amazing. It was a brilliant trip. And we were meant to go back to last year and of course you know just 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 to go back and see the art museums and things but of course it was all cancelled so we're gonna have to do it this year instead <laughs> pretty much and, this, and you've been um back in did you go flying today or yesterday it was yesterday no yes yesterday yesterday so i did local area yesterday oh that was hilarious <laughs> So I said to my partner, because where, where I go flying is at Blackbush, which is just down the M3, um, just kind of west of Guildford. Okay. Oh, yeah, I saw Bob Dylan there. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> well, I was there yesterday. I didn't see anybody famous. But um, so I said to my partner, because where we live in Berkshire is not far from the airport. And I uh, airfield. So I said, um, right, we're going to do local air. I'm going to come and fly over the house. Um, I'll probably be jumping in the plane about half past nine, quarter to ten. It takes about half an hour, 20 minutes to get over to this area, Greenham Common and round where we are. So um, if you can keep an eye out for the plane, that will be me coming over the house and I'll waggle my wings or whatever. And, you know, you can you can see me. So anyway, um, went over there, did, did the prep and everything, got in the plane and had a great flight. But, you know, it always looked different from above. You know, like when, you, when you're in a commercial aeroplane and you have that period of time be between... Um, oh, actually, Ella, hang on a sec. You're really echoey. Are you still I am. I just have to have worse, actually. see if that helps. Yeah, have you got anything else? Yeah, have you got anything else open on on the desktop or anywhere? Or no, no. Okay. Give that. <laughs> I don't think my signal on my on my Wi-Fi is very good though. As well, I don't think that's helping. But, but anyway, so so to quickly get back to the story, so so we we come to fly over the house, but it all looks a bit different from above, um, and so of course. My instructor's going, well, so where's the house? And, oh, I think we've just flown over it. I th literally think we've just gone over it. So he says, well, that's okay. We need to do a steep turn, he said, and we'll go back. And, of course, I'm still fairly new to this. And I'm going, steep turn? He said, yes, steep. And as in steep, it's literally gone like that. And, of course, so he had control. And I'm like, oh, my God, grabbing hold of the thing, just like getting used to the G-force flying back over to the house and then he said so where is it now I said I think we've just flown over it again he says okay well now you've got to do the other side but you've got to do it this time so this time I've had to do it and and if you I, I don't know if, if any of you have done any of this but there's an awful lot of things to think about you've got to hold on to the ailerons you've got uh, the rudders you've got the throttle you have to hold on to the throttle pretty much all the time so you have to put the throttle all the way and you're moving and you're keeping an eye out the window and you're doing all this and you're flying over it again and and then that's it you've got it says okay we've got to go back now so we've got we're flying back and i kind of had glimpses of the house and the garden and that was about it so I get home and my partner's Stuart, he's going, I saw you fly over the house. I knew it was you. You did those wonderful steep turns. Did you see me waving? And I'm like, no, I didn't see anything. I was too busy. 
<laughs> so he got a shot. Um, he actually took a picture of me and he says, look, that's you. And all it is is a literally a blue square of sky and this tiny, tiny, tiny dot of aeroplane in the middle of it. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. So and you, you have, you'll have to go back there next week. <laughs> I'm going on Friday, uh, but on Friday uh, it's back to normal. I'm doing circuits and things because I'm getting ready to do my solo. But no, it, it was because I haven't flown for six months. It was it was local area. It, it was sort of go out and have a bit of fun, which is why I went. Yeah, let's let's go over and fly over the house and have some fun. And it was it was awesome. I love flying. It's it's brilliant. Best thing. I think, uh, <laughs> yeah. A long time ago. Um, well, my dad had a place in Scotland and um, there's some fishing down by the river, so we go and chase salmon all day. And um, you're sort of sitting there, sort of fishing, and suddenly you hear a you know, single, um, single engine aircraft flying around. Thought, That's fine. And then suddenly the engine turns off. Yep. <laughs> and then you don't hear anything, and you think, That's fine. And then you get zzz, yeah, <laughs> off it goes. But then we found that he was actually training Idi Amin. They were training Idi Amin's Air Force. <laughs> and that was different. That was zzz, okay, fine. And you look up and you think, fuck, that's getting close. <laughs> <laughs> that's getting very close. <laughs> No. <laughs> well, you know what that is, don't you? When they're, they're flying and the engine goes and then it comes back on again, is they're practicing their stall procedures. Yeah, yeah. He said they weren't <laughs> very good at an unstalling. <laughs> yeah. And I think, the, you know, the, you could, one time I could see it was, it was getting quite low, actually. It was on the other bank, so it was, uh, but I could just see this by the, the, uh, the instructor. Thank you. But, you know, you see, there's a little bit of a discussion going. <laughs> because otherwise if you flood the engine i presume it's, it's or whatever but they had you know there's procedures for everything but I, I i know that some of them got very 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 low my dad actually uh at one time where he thought shit he just actually he literally physically ducked because he thought he might get hit <laughs> um yeah the, 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 but there's a very short period there was a school airport um school in in scotland and they just decided to train um i think the Air Force probably had about two planes and they had about five pilots, but they decided to actually train them here. I don't know why, but anyway. How long have you been flying, Ella? Um, since 2018. Yeah. But, of course, a lot of last year was, was missed, unfortunately. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, are you going to get yourself a, a plane? Well, that would be nice, but you don't have to because you can you can rent them. You 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 can hire planes for. I mean, where the Blackbush Aviation where I train, they they will hire planes out for the day or for a couple of days to to members. Um, and what a lot of people do is they will buy a share in a plane. So instead of just having a plane to yourself, you would go into a syndicate of, say, four or five people who, you know, want, you know, where you want to use a plane for a weekend or a few days, but you don't want one constantly. And they work quite well because you share the cost. I, um, I, I nearly uh, got into business once with, this is a plane-related story. Um, <laughs> I, I, I once got into, nearly got into business once with um, a guy called Arnold, Arnie, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> um, a friend of mine uh, and I had been previously in, involved in uh, sports nutrition products. And um, uh, there was a possibility of setting this company up with uh, Schwarzenegger um, branded uh, nutritional products for bodybuilders. Well, it would be, a, it was a no-brainer. I mean, we, it, we'd have cleaned up in that market. Um, and uh, Schwarzenegger was quite happy to, to do everything. He was going to come over and uh, do uh, visits and uh, promotions and that sort of thing. Uh, he was having a shareholding in the company. Uh, we were going to run it all and, and, and that sort of thing. 
And uh, then we looked at the small print and we had to pay his expenses, which is fair enough. <laughs> except, except his expenses included um, paying for his uh, private jet that he owned, actually. He, he got a, I think it was a Learjet. Uh, and we had to pay from the moment it left the hangar in L.A. to the moment it got back in the hangar in L.A. And it was $10,000 an hour. Whoa. So that killed it stone dead. <laughs> wow, you don't think it would have made enough then to... <laughs> no. <laughs> no? No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. No. So Julie? Nothing planes can be expected. Yeah. I said to Julie a minute ago, can you do you want to go solo? And and I think you meant oh, I, I, didn't I don't get want to go. To me. No. <laughs> she said I can't think of anything worse than being in a small plane. I went, no, I meant do you want to go solo on the screen to talk about something? <laughs> oh right, sorry, I missed your comment. Do you want to go solo? solo? No, I can't think of anything worse. I mean do you I want to talk solo? <laughs> and profound thoughts to share with you this evening. Okay. Let's yeah. just hold the dialogue here. It's something that's been really, you know, every time I turn on my computer, it comes to mind. And I think to myself, is life better when we put a filter on it? I always, I went into this round of dialogues and I went, shit, there's no filter, you know? So you can't, you can't airbrush yourself. <laughs> before going online. So I, I work online all day, but I can change my appearance constantly all day. I can airbrush, I can look amazing all day long. But Jane introduces, says five minutes beforehand, again, I was wearing no pants. I'm in a t-shirt, <laughs> I haven't brushed my hair in about seven. And there's no down filter. But I often think about that, you know, like how reliant the world is now on filters in terms of like on our Facebook, any photos we put on Facebook, a lot of people put filters on. I mean, most people put filters on now. I mean, when they get to our age, <laughs> age you know, you put a filter on. But I think to myself, you know, is it disingenuous to put a filter on? And I know Jane's been going through this thing about, I know you stopped cutting your hair because I guess the chemical and stuff did you stop dyeing your hair jane i have stopped it's got to about here the gray but i'm looking at yours tonight thinking that's the way forward isn't it to get a shortcut and well mine mine was 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 white to here and black down here but well, i quite, I quite, I quite I like thinking, it i, I remember been, we were I, I, and you suddenly wore this wig and i was like your hair looks so different you had a fringe and it was i didn't realize afraid you put a wig I've, on. I've, tried, I've done wigs i've done i have a blue wig i have lots of wigs just for fun but but uh i often think like there's like not a chameleon element to being online but like i love the fact that we can just go online and like like you don't have to do any it's no fuss no must like women are often expected to spend hours on makeup and the why the hell no i can press a button and have a beautiful long eyelashes why would i you know this this covid thing has has now taken it to another another level girls are understanding we can sit in track pants all day long you know men can get away with it Look at look, Jane's wearing all Phil, Phil's a past master <laughs> at uh, doing the filters as well. I've, I've, well, I've seen him have... with the halo and, and the eyebrows and everything on yeah, Zoom. You can't, you can't do this on uh, on this platform, can you? I know <laughs> you, you've got to change the platform because you know, mm. if you ever get boring conversationalists. You just mm. whack a cat filter on them, or yeah. it's, 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 it's very right? easy because normally what happens is that Jane just suddenly just presses the go the exit button. Think, oh, shit, we have a technical problem. I'm sorry. Oh, sh there was a mute for us. I was like, should I mute someone in a minute? <laughs> If you don't shut up, I'm going to mute you. Warning. You warning. Mute you. Well, actually, when we, when we first started doing these, it was like, you know, uh, we've got more settled haven't we, into it, I think, into the groove, and it's a bit more relaxed. But I was like, right, I was like, right, five minutes up, right, let's remove you from solo. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody it's can look at your face for more than five minutes or they'll turn to stone. Yes, I can yes. 
that. Um, okay, wait, let me clarify my comment. I need to make a comment on uh, Ella's statement. And actually, I've been thinking about this a lot as well. I was watching The Serpent on Netflix, and I don't know if you've seen that uh, show, but oh my God, because th there seems to be have also a travel theme today. Lots of people talk about Santa Fe and uh, the beaches and the nudist beaches and different places. Um, the Okay, tell me that you have not in the past traveled and just talked to like random people I've ended up on people's couches and sleeping at people's houses that I don't know. I've ended up all sorts of places. I've met great people traveling. That's the best thing traveling. traveling. Oh my God. I lived, in, I lived in Thailand for five years. And seriously, I think back to that time, how many times could I have been killed? <laughs> my husband murdered like uh, in, in different countries that I've lived in because of how friendly and stupid and naive we have been. Actually, that, that's really interesting. I don't know that you would, necess you would necessarily be, because when I went to Thailand, I was, how old was I? I was 21. And I, the, the, the freakiest thing, Julie, the freakiest thing was, so I'd been there four days, but I'm a girl on my own. I was completely on my own and I'd booked this holiday for 10 days in Bangkok, okay? My dad had already gone completely blitz, but I'm going by George. I was gonna go and live in Australia and I was gonna to go to Thailand and I was gonna have a holiday. I was in Bangkok four days, I was bored out my gourd because they just don't want girls going in certain places. This was 1990 and those two girls had just got done for the drugs and all of that, okay? And, um, so, so first of all, the, the taxi drivers would not take me to certain places and all the rest of it. And I met this guy in a park who was, he used to be a Buddhist monk. And he said, lovely guy, I had my photo taken with him. I never saw the photo. Anyway, the point being, he said, why don't you go to Pattaya for the day? You can get the bus. That's where I lived. That's where yeah. I lived. Yes, really. <laughs> you get the bus. He says, it's really cheap, super, super cheap. Go down there. It's, it's really calm. You'll love it. So I went, okay. So I got the bus. I went down there and I was on the beach and I met these three lovely guys, all older guys, Bill, a bit older than 30. And no, I wasn't topless. I mean, and she, was, she wasn't called whatever her name <laughs> was. I wasn't topless. And they said, you're bored in Bangkok, you're on your own. Tell you what, why don't you come and stay with us for the rest of your trip down in Pattaya? So I went, oh, well, do you think I get it? And they showed me the hotel and it was really clean and all the rest of it. So it was like, yeah, okay. So I went back to Bangkok and I checked out of my hotel uh, the next morning and I went back to the bus station. And here's the thing. There's this guy at the entrance to the bus station. And he says to me, you like Pattaya? You go back to Pattaya? You're going to spend the rest of your time there? And I'm like, how the hell does this guy know that I've been there and I'm going back there? Okay. They, it's, it's, I don't know whether it's you or whether it's the place. I, I don't know, but it, it was, it, it, I was no. so naive. I was so naive. I was going to go to the night bazaar. I went there during the day. I wanted to go shopping. I want to go back to the night bazaar. And they say, no, you can't go to the night bazaar. Ladies don't go there. Oh, really? I used to go there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they literally wouldn't take me. Wow. You're, okay, but this is the thing about watching this this show, this movie. It was taken, a, the, the, it's a true story, and it's based yeah. on a serial killer who was in, uh, in those locations, like Thailand. He went back and forth, Hong Kong, stealing people's identities and murdering people along the way. Oh, but my God. Right, right at the time... That I was there, and probably you were there, and maybe other people. I was but there. You see yourself. <laughs> I saw myself in like a million situations, and I said to myself, "Oh my god, why am I not dead right now?" Like, mm. there are people standing. Like, 
it was just the way he was so sinister, like just looking at the, the young people and watching, listening to where they're from. Oh, are you French? And he could change into like multiple uh, dialects, like because he just knew different accents. Anyways, you have to watch it because it makes you so grateful that like the adventures that we had <laughs> on the nudist beaches and whatever, be attacked by, uh, you know, how lucky we are to get out unscathed. Like, and I think of that from being in Tanzania, also in different places that we've lived and a visa goes over by this much. I was three hours in interrogation in, in, in uh, Tanzania. It's when my life flashed before me because I had two kids and I thought to myself, my husband and I are in interrogation in Tanzania. We're going to get thrown into jail. What the flip is going to happen to my kids? And I thought to myself, you know, I've been traveling the world for 25 years and now it's come to head the reality. Finally, it's come how dangerous actually and how risky the stuff that we take for granted actually really is and unknowingly we do like in traveling, like we're just so naive. I, I mean, I can't believe how naive I was when I watched that show. You know, I will, it changed my perspective forever on traveling, sadly. <laughs> I'll be forever paranoid. But anyways, so anyways, that's that's all I had to say. Just on my little soapbox, those two little comments about <laughs> life being better with the filter potentially. And yeah, anyways. Yeah. yeah, it's true. And I think having children and my own, you know, daughters. Yeah. Oh my God, things I used to get up, things I've done, I would kill her. <laughs> I'd kill her. They did the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'd be terrified of things I used to do, have done. Like you say, just through the naive filter, you know, just through a naive traveling filter. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's funny. Julie, Julie, my, would, yeah. Julie, would you let your, uh, your, your kids go to Pattaya on their own? Well, funnily enough, my brother lives there, but not in Pattaya. He doesn't live in Pattaya, but his, his, he's married a Thai girl. And my my dad has a place in Patia on on uh, one of the beaches. So no. yeah, I would. But actually, one of the reasons I left Thailand was because I didn't want to raise kids there. I did. I found it very dis. Uh, I mean, it was very uncomfortable. And I thought to myself, my kids were both born there in Thailand. So right. um, I said to myself, when they got like one and two years old, uh, you know, how am I going to explain to them this? Uh, you know, well, the, 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 the men with the little boys walking around and, you know, I don't want to have to explain that to them. Although we do go on holiday there every, every, <laughs> every winter almost. So. Um, I, I, like, I've, I've been to, I've been to Pattaya a couple of times. I think it's a great place. It's great. Really great. But I mean, it's very it naughty, a very naughty place. Yes, it can, it can be, but dangerous also. It was, like, when I went. it was lovely when I went. It was you it was you clearly life. didn't spend enough time in the unsavory areas then. It's, it, it actually is, um, I mean, I had a friend in, uh, well, not close friend, but I that I worked with, uh, you know, end up, I had a kid in my class who's, I swear her, her, her mom was murdered by her father, who was in Hale's Angel, because it was all very, like, it was all, and also there's lots of, um, you know, mysterious motorbike accidents that happen. One person wants to get rid of another person and then like they drive them off the road. People get trapped there. Like my brother went through, a friend of his got trapped in Thailand. Um, you know, they have motorbike accidents and then they, they're in the hospital. They don't have insurance. They end up getting stuck there. It, it happens so often. And I think to myself, I'm so lucky. And my, my dad is rushing, wishing to go back there again. He loves it. Um, and, uh, you know, he loves the weather. He loves the food. He sits on the, you know, he has a nice condo and uh, right on the water. It's but very cheap. Well, it's very it's cheap. Dirt cheap. Yeah. It's great to live. It's in it. And, uh, you know, and my, my brother's lives, my brother lives, my brother makes no money and he lives like a king. He makes he works online, lives like a king, has a beautiful palace he lives in, you know. Wow. And so Shit, I think we should all go there. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like well, I, over the holiday I just bought a house in tu uh, in Tuscany, in Italy. That was my uh holiday uh extravagance. <laughs> so with thirty thousand euros, I managed to buy a five bedroom house. That was my uh 
Ooh. Oh my gosh. Yes, it was a, a little impromptu, but uh, <laughs> I think it's something to do, keep me occupied. <laughs> Well, there are places in the world you, where you can just you can buy a house on a credit card. Yeah, just a, a well, credit card. I just I just paid them cash. I I just you know I don't even have a, a mortgage on this. It's ridiculous. It's like so cheap. Like the the properties there are ridiculous, and the government gives you another hundred thousand to repair the property, to put in solar panels, to do all this stuff for free. So it's just nuts. Where's like, where, where this, Julie? What? Where's this? It, Where is I, this? Bought... It's in Italy, but um, Ambruzzo is the area. It's near the um, beach. Is, is, is Italy, um, I can't remember, if, I think Italy has gone negative interest rates. So if you actually, if you actually um, buy, borrow money to buy a property, um, you actually get paid for borrowing the money? Uh, I, I can believe that. They pay you to renovate your house. For every $100 they spend, you spend, they give you 10 bucks. Oh, my God. So it, it makes no freaking sense. And and also the additional bonus that people don't know about is if you're a digital nomad, if you work online or your teacher, you only pay tax or you buy property, you only pay tax on 10% of your property. Um, wait, sorry, your 10% of your wealth, your income. So you only pay on that little bit tax for 10 years. So it's it's a no-brainer. Like, I mean, you just register and you can avoid and you register as a Italian person. Because I live near Italy. Well, not really, eleven hours away, so I can become a resident easily enough. But yeah. yeah I think it's, uh, Estonia's, uh, right. Estonia's got some interesting uh, things as well. The digital Where? Uh, Est Estonia has got some uh, with the digital uh, yeah, citizenship. And Georgia is trying to bring in yeah. digital nomads yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. So we're I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap us up because it's four minutes to okay allotment eight. time come on i want to talk about my boring story well actually i was just gonna think i was thinking about she was uh, nude in the allotment she was yes, naked no, in the my, allotment. My, my allotment story was no well actually i will say at the start of it and i might link it into maybe a quick travel story i don't know how so uh allotment now is a not meant OK, so in 2007, with a baby in tow and a toddler, I decided to investigate our local allotment in Woking. And I think actually the reason I did that from this conversation tonight, I'm reading off one blog on the other, was because I wanted adventure still. I love adventure. And having the children was I felt my wings had been clipped and it was like really restrictive for me at times, not being able to do the things I wanted to do and the things I used to do. So getting an allotment was a way to have adventure still and sort of get out, get them out in the push chairs and go for a walk rather than getting in the car each time wanted to go somewhere going to the park and then one falling asleep and I just found it like the, the having to have a routine was important I felt about with them and easier but it was at the same time it constrained and my husband was away a lot and uh so I thought I'd get an allotment and uh, I I sort of walked to the back of the plot and there was this big scrubby overgrown area and I, my the guy who was showing me around and showed me some other plots that were kind of leading turning over but nearer to the gates but I was like oh, no I want this one a because it was at the back near the woods but also it was next to a big water butt and I thought when you want to do the water it's going to be so much easier so um Paulie did a bit more persuading about getting it and thinking how on earth are we going to find the time to do it um but then sort of 13 years on we've still got it it's still going strong even with our two-year adventure in Tanzania so when we went to Tanzania um, I had a friend um, that was involved with the business I was involved with. He was a Gurkha, a former Gurkha, so um, lived just on the road and him and his wife took it over for the two years. And then we came back and picked it up again, but not so but not so easily because we, we'd moved house um, and now we still, we sort of commute over there. But every time we go there, it's just, it's just such a peaceful place. It's a real Zen hole, a real sort of bolt hole. And, and it's a love-hate thing too, you know, especially during the summer when there's drought, weeds, bolting seeds. And, you know, this year I'm deciding I'm not going to grow salad there, courgettes, beans. They're going to keep in the garden bed where I can keep an eye on them and pick them properly. But I think actually having that allotment, as, as from this conversation tonight, it was very international. And my kids, when they were little, were, you know, crawling around in the dirt at sort of from six months on, but with an international community. So it was my, it, it was it, that I felt they they really got to know about other cultures and we'd cook, have different foods I'd never experienced. I'd cook cook herbs I'd never heard of before, um, and I 
I hadn't really thought about that properly, possibly till now. Um, so I started to write about my allotment adventures over on Facebook when they, when I first started up, and I called myself Allotment Rascal. And I've had, um, you know, I've been in the paper about some vegetables I've planted before and pictures I've taken, and I've had weird sort of serendipitous things happen because of it. And in the last couple of weeks, I thought I'm finally going to start documenting our discoveries and other random stuff and write about nature and our plot and biodiversity and just planetary stuff um, in a Google Doc and publish it and maybe publish a bit as a blog on WordPress too. So in my doc, I've got like net, my recent nettle soup and I've got mushrooms we've been finding and wild garlic I've been harvesting. Um, and I feel like it's something I really love to do. Now we're talking, going back to Ella, you know, thinking about things we really enjoy and I feel totally in flow there, totally in love with it. And um, I feel it's a really important thing for, for kids to grow up appreciating nature and in, the, and in nature and um, we're so we're often so far removed from it these days and uh, I know particularly during lockdown we I think there was a bigger connection to it people were getting out more and exploring the local areas so anyone who's watching who if anyone does whatever wants to get an allotment and it's too much for them you, you can actually get community plots too so when my father passed away a couple of years ago I ended up finding it a bit of a chore going over to the Woking allotment and it was another thing to do. So I ended up getting a local plot. It was a community space and they gave me this long bed and it was just enough for me just to pop, pop down there, talk to people, cry, drink tea, grow stuff and, um, and pay a fiver or something ridiculous. Um, so yeah, a lot, there is a lot meant. And also when I took it on, I didn't realize playing it forward that actually could have been the thing I wrote the book about because I got the books at the time on allotments and bits and I thought oh everyone's written it already but we did it in our own way and we've discovered our own way of doing it so sometimes the things we're doing we don't realize that actually they could be something that's interesting for somebody else um, and it's our own our, in our own way of doing something so when we set up when I set up random dialogues we did talks and workshops on how I do things not how to do things it was more this is how I do it and so you're not necessarily an expert in what you're doing it's just what you're passionate about so maybe in the future you know there's things here in this group, this group here where you do something that you're passionate about and you just like to do a how I talk or a how I workshop or something related to your passions and what you love to do so a lot meant that's the end of my little talk can I say something uh just I want to say that I think uh, leading on from that one thing that you said, the talking about your passion, I think this 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 group is interesting because it brings people like actually I think I have nothing in common with probably like most of you, like Jane I hate gardening, yeah Ella I hate flying, I don't like nudist beaches, but but I think, but I know there's more to you than this, but but I think it's interesting because it brings people from different walks of life with different interests so they can also see that there's connections between them and things that spark your interest. And because of actually one of the things of, of Jane, I, I really hate your post about nettles and things because I don't relate to them at all. And I think who the hell would eat this shit? But I would like to tell you that I have started basil plants and I've been starting to clip them and try to grow my own stuff inside the house, maybe inspired by you. So, I mean, like we can learn something from everybody, even though we have nothing in common, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and, sometimes, and sometimes we're not ready, are we, for the things? And actually, when I was a younger, my mum grew vegetables and we had spaces and I was like, oh, to give, like, we're not interested. But it really did get into my soul. And, I, and it's more yeah. than the allotment. It's more about just... yeah. A space of creative. It's a creative okay. nature, and it's, and it's a space to be creative. Yeah. You can actually make a right old mess on the allotment, plant seeds like I do in a wiggly line, ha just pluck them in and hope they work. That's what I do. Jane, it's, it's, it's you, work. wait, I got the best story. Just we have to tell this story at the end. Jane and I worked together in Tanzania, and we both did a unit on vegetable farming. We did a lovely unit on farming. We decided, let's make a practical thing. Let's plant a garden, okay? Look at the two of our gardens right beside each other. Mine, completely dead, nothing in it. You were pulling out stuff out of your garden. I kill everything I touch. But Jane, 
has this no 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 don't forget paul took it on paul had the, because paul ah. had the time, it was called the shamba so we had she our did. own shamba okay and so he, well. he occupied himself with growing vegetables and we take the kids wouldn't we from our classrooms to our shamba to to, to a little for all no, that i'm not talking about that garden i'm talking about the garden behind our classroom it was an embarrassment that garden <laughs> I had the, the the carrots I took out of there to show the kids. Oh, look, we can grow. And I'm trying to be all like. Oh, yes, I remember that now. I've forgotten about that. The, 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 the carrots were like this big. And the kids are like, you know, all this work for nothing, you know. <laughs> anyway. But, yeah, but that's sorry. also because you didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't water enough. And I didn't put them in the sun. Yes, I know. Whatever. I don't. I, I can't merge with the seeds. <laughs> Anyway. So this, there were a few uh, sessions ago, I wrote a little blog about um, uh, stone soup, and in uh, kindly uh, over time, and every, all of you here have uh, you know given me nuggets of things to put up in the write up. So you're right, it's about coming together, it's gathering together, sharing stories, having some fun, and most of all, it's a bit of a fun bonding experience when we do this. So thank you for being uh, here this evening. And Jason, and Jason getting off into his cat into his dog suit. Yes, oh, oh, Jason. Oh, Let me take a photo. Can I take a photo for the group? There you go. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, brilliant. Got it. End the blog. What's, what's, end what's, the blog. The, what's the name of your dog? Loki. 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 Yeah. 